Greetings, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 20th day of October, and it's Friday, and today's topic is tr uh, titled Troubling Trouble, and this will be the last pre-recorded broadcast as we are traveling home today, and tomorrow we should be back live doing live broadcasts on Facebook, and then upload them to the YouTube channel, but uh, all these uh, that I've done over the last two weeks, uh, starting on... I think I started back on the 8th is when I started doing the pre-recording for uh, the 8th all the way to the 20th and we've been traveling so all those have been uploaded onto the YouTube channel including this one that will be uploaded on today and then tomorrow will be back live uh, Lord willing uh, for Saturday and then uh, not sure when the next trip will be but uh, probably won't be for a while but uh, Thank you for praying for us and hope you're continuing to pray and pray for those governors that we were able to get the um, Bible to and pray that they read it and open up and come to trust Jesus as our Savior and pray for this country and and whatever your country you're uh, living in, I pray for your country and uh, and to get the gospel out to those wherever you're at. Amen. If you're saved, that is. And if you're not saved, well, today is the day of salvation and uh, so... Praise the Lord, and now we'll go ahead and uh, put this aside here and get into the scripture song for today. But before that, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, and he too can be your Lord and Savior today if he's not already. If you are saved, hope you're going out there and telling somebody about Jesus today. As Jesus said, uh, for us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, and tell somebody about Jesus today if you're saved. And if you're not saved, well, today is the day to get saved. I was just mentioning that here a few seconds ago. So get that settled in your heart and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And he will be glad to save your soul. Amen. And uh, so we're going to start with today's scripture song from 2 Corinthians 5.21. And let's go ahead and look at 2 Corinthians 5 first before we get into the scripture song. So we can get some context here in this chapter so second corinthians let's go there to second corinthians chapter five and let's see here there's 21 verses and this is from the 21 21st verse and so let's see here this is uh paul uh, speaking here and he says here in verse one for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. That's right. So that'll be the house we get uh, in our new body. It'll be the same body without sin. We'll be in this body without sin one day, and sin will be gone in our glorified bodies. So praise the Lord for that, and we'll be with Jesus in heavenly places. So... All right, continue on in verse 2. He says, For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given us, uh, given unto us the earnest of the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Right? So we're supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body, and to be present with the Lord. And we are all looking for that day, that blessed hope of Jesus Christ when he comes to catch us away, whether it be in death or in the rapture. So I hope you're rapture ready and ready to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, as First Thessalonians chapter 4 says, starting in 13 all the way to 18. All right, so continuing on. <clears throat> that says here in verse 9, Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. So that's, our, that's what we did with Jesus after we're saved. 
doesn't mean we lose our salvation, but we can lose rewards and inheritance and all that. So make sure you're uh, keeping that in mind. <clears throat> Verse 11 says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences, for we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance, and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet know, or now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. That's right. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. So, being saved, be ambassador for Christ. Let's be good ambassadors and representatives for the Lord uh, Jesus. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. And then uh, the scripture song verse, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Praise the Lord. So let's look for that uh, blessed hope, Jesus Christ, coming to take us away one day, catch us away in the rapture. So if you're not saved, well, you will miss the rapture and uh, die in your sins. So hope you get saved today so you don't uh, end up missing that. <laughs> Amen. All right. So Second Corinthians 5.21 Amen. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Praise the Lord. All right, here we go. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him? For he hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? Who knew no sin that we might be made? The righteousness of God in Him. He hath made Him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin? Who knew no sin? He might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Who knew no sin? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Amen. All right, so we'll put that back to yesterday's, and we'll do those scripture songs again towards the end of the broadcast. And now it's time to get into today's topic titled Troubling Trouble for this 20th day of October, Friday. And it says here in Jonah 1.15, So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from her raging. Jonah 1.15, and I encourage you to read all of the book of Jonah, only four short chapters there, and talking about what Jonah did when the Lord told him that he needed to go to Nineveh, or Nineveh, and 
preach um, what the Lord was going to do and how he's going to bring down his wrath on that city if they didn't repent. And then he didn't want to do that because he knew that God was merciful and long-suffering and not willing that any should perish. And that if they repented that he would uh, spare them. And he didn't want them to be spared because he didn't seem to like these uh, people too much or they were he was being persecuted by them or something. So um, read that all up and, and get that in. So... All right, so let's see here. The author is K.M. That would be, I think that's Ken McComas. And let's see here. That's Ken McComas from Ritman, Ohio. So let me read you what he wrote on this topic of troubling trouble. So he writes here, says here, There is an old saying that says, Don't trouble trouble until trouble troubles you. <laughs> uh, in spite of that ancient adage, there are those who seem to go out of their way to borrow trouble, mm, right? Some people really ask for it, never willing to let the sleeping dog lie, and that's the truth. Jonah asked for it, and when it caught up to him, he was a man with no one to blame but himself. Yeah, so you have no one to blame but yourself. His story has been rewritten in thousands of lives down through the centuries, here is the way the Holy Spirit records the sailors in verse 10 confronting Jonah. Why hast thou done this? These men knew that he had fled from God's presence because he had told them, right? Notice, then uh, notice they, then they said unto him, What shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? Jonah responded, Take me up and cast me forth into the sea. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you, verses 11 through 12. These heathen sailors displayed more sympathy than many fundamentalists of our day. And he puts in parentheses, I am a fundamentalist. We cast them overboard without an opportunity to explain. The sailors' compassion and sympathy for Jonah could not permanently defer the judgment demanded by justice which was ultimate when people go out in search of trouble they always find it and involve many others with them <laughs> that is right that's the truth peace can never be restored until the troublemaker is apprehended and stopped so don't be a troublemaker and stay away from those that like to cause trouble so and make sure that you explain to them that their trouble is only going to get them in worse trouble and those around them and Pray that they would stop and all that stuff. So don't be a troublemaker and stay away from troublemakers. Amen. So, good advice there from this topic today. Troubling trouble. And now I'll go ahead and put that aside and grab the Daily Strength Volume 1 book. And we are continuing through this topic on Patience Continued, the second week of Patience. And it is Friday, day 258. And this is titled Run with Patience. So run with patience Hebrews 12 1 through 2 and I like uh, these passages here and uh, or actually um, 1 through 3 so and uh, continuing on I uh, read the whole chapter for you um, or you can read it on your own time actually and we'll read these first three verses here Hebrews 12 1 says wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. In verse 2 and 3, I like these. Here, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds so praise the lord and uh encourage you to watch uh um this movie on william tyndale god uh god's smuggler um or no god's outlaw sorry god's outlaw and a uh, good movie about william tyndale and read up on him and he's uh the one that uh 90 percent of the king james uh bible is off of his um version of the bible so check his story out and uh amen and remember him writing these uh verses here and 
praise the Lord. So that is Hebrews 12, 1 through 3. And now introductory thoughts. It says the Bible likens the life of a believer to many things, one of these being a race. So being a race, what our life's our life's race is likened more to a marathon or cross country run rather than a short lived sprint, right? In these types of endurance races, the strategic runner outlasts the impatient contender. Hmm. A sprint initiated uh, at the starting line may place the runner at the head of the pack, but always yields a disappointing outcome. The same holds true concerning the Christian race. Believers are to run this race patiently. The Christian must never allow present trials and difficult circumstances to disqualify him from his prospective race. In fact, the long-term goal of winning the race must be ever-present in every thought and action. The Christian race is not only about how much we can accomplish in the present, present, but what the Lord has accomplished before our crossing of the finish line. Amen and hallelujah. All right, so that was introductory thoughts. And now devotional thoughts for children. It says Elimelech and Naomi did not have the patience to wait on God when there were food shortages in Bethlehem. They took their two sons and moved to Moab. While they were there, Elimelech and his two sons died. Their lives may have turned out differently. Uh, yeah, their lives may have turned out differently if they had simply waited on God to take care of them in Bethlehem. And then for everyone, it says, In what ways could patience actually help you reach the finish line first? How could patience in the race keep you from quitting when times get tough? How are you running your race? Are you attempting to sprint? Or are you allowing the Lord to guide your direction and control your pace? Hmm, so that's a good uh, suggestion there. A good idea to let the Lord guide our direction and the control of our pace instead of uh, attempting to sprint and then not finishing well. It's good to start well, but it's even better to finish well. Amen? All right, and I wanted to say something about um, a woman like a Naomi. And uh, this is in the book of Ruth and how Ruth came to know Naomi's God and uh, and Boaz and then she was redeemed and a picture of uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ redeeming us and anyone that gets saved so a good picture there and I encourage you to read all of the book of Ruth <clears throat> so praise the Lord all right now for our thoughts it says ask God to help you run with patience and then ask God to show you that the best path and pace to run is his path and his pace so and then the song is by and by by black black all that's the hymn writer so put that aside and now we'll go ahead and get into the hymns and could not find the hymn for the second one and both both of these are having a hard time finding the hymn for but uh, got an instrumental sampling for the first one and so I'll do this one and listen to it and then I'll go ahead and just read you the the second one and then uh, let's see here so there is a story for this first one here and this is hymn 533 in the Psalms and of the Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs book and this is the start or uh, actually this is um, going to be the start of these two hymns on the wisdom for the saint two of these and a spiritual song 533 the more of my heart I learn and this is written by uh, John Fawcett who lived from 1740 to 1817 and Johann or Johann G. Uh, Scheffler S-C-H-E-F-F-L-E-R Scheffler or Johann Scheffler um, uh, 1624 to 1677 so they lived a way long time ago alright so six stanzas here and I'll let you listen to it really quick and then we'll see if it's easy to sing along with now I might have to read it to you so here we go <clears throat> Thank you. 
All right, we'll try it here. <clears throat> The more I'm versed in wisdom school, the more I see myself a, a fool. With grief of heart, I often cry. How weak, how ignorant am I? Alright, so that's what it would sound like if you were to sing along with it. I'll just go ahead and read you the rest of the stanzas, and then give you the story, and then the references, and then we'll move on to the second one. So, here we go. Stanza 2 says, And yet, where'er my eyes I turn, I see occasion still to mourn. N new objects give me no relief, for knowledge is a scorn, uh, a scorse of grief. What mortal tongue can e'er relate the miseries of our lapped, lapped state? New scenes of sin and sorrow rise to wound our hearts and pain our eyes. The more of men and things I know in this perplexing world below, the more I daily still perceive occasion to lament and grieve. The more of my own heart I learn more cause of grief I still discern. This makes me often sigh and cry, Lord, what a sinful wretch am I! But, oh, the knowledge of thy love doth still a source of pleasure prove. The more I know thy word in thee, the sweeter will my comforts be. Hallelujah! So good hymn there. And now the story here says, Based on Ecclesiastes 1 8, Fa uh, Fawcett penned these thoughts on the uh, passage. So these are his thoughts. Such distressing discoveries are made by the inquisitive mind of the blindness, the wickedness, the misery of man, that in much acquaintance with these subjects is much grief. The wise preacher instead devoted himself to things above his hymns being principally composed in the midnight hours or in times of rest. Mm. So that is the story there behind that hymn. And now let me give you the references here. So stanza one, we have Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, and Psalm 73, 22. Stanza two is Ecclesiastes 1, 18. Stanza three is Psalm 39, 5, and Psalm 109, 22. Stanza 4 is Hebrews 1, 3, and Lamentations 3, 51. Stanza 5 is Jeremiah 17, 9, and Romans 7, 24. And then stanza 6 is 1 John 4, 8, and Philippians 3, 8. So that is the end of the first one. So we're going to jump back here and hit this one. So this one is the second hymn. And like I said, I could not find a... <clears throat> instrumental for this one or at least uh, uh maybe i'll try to look for it another day okay so this is uh hymn 902 triumph by and by and this is one of these the raptures of the church hymns a spiritual song amen so where does these hymns actually start with so this actually these rapture hymns start on 899 and so then they go, I'm sure there's a lot of these here, so this is like the third one in. Um, the Rapture of the Church, a spiritual song, Triumph by and by, 902, written by Christopher R. Black, Blackall, 1830 to 1924, and Horatio R. Palmer, 1834 to 1907. So let me give you these um, stanzas here. So stanza one says this, The prize is set before us. To win his words implore us. The eye of God is o'er us from on high, from on high. His loving tones are calling. While sin is dark, appalling, tis Jesus gently calling. He is nigh, he is nigh. Stanza two will follow where he leadeth, will pastor, pasture where he feedeth, will yield to him. Who 
pleadeth from on high, from on high, then not from him shall sever. Our hope shall, bre be, shall brighten ever, and faith shall fail us never. He is nigh, he is nigh. Our home is bright above us, no trials dark to move us, but Jesus dear to love us, there on high, there on high, we'll give him best endeavor, and praise his name forever, his precious words can never, never die, never die. And then the refrain goes like this, by and by we shall meet him, by and by we shall greet him, and with, Je and with Jesus reign in glory, by and by, by and by, by and by. We shall meet him, by and by we shall greet him, and with Jesus reign in glory, by and by. Praise the Lord. Good hymn there. Wish there was an instrumental for that one. I might have to look for that one and try to sing it next time. Okay, so let's see here. We have a little story here at the bottom. It says, This was one of Brother Blackall's most popular songs for children. It was originally written and composed for the Sunday School of the Second Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois. There's a Second Baptist Church. <laughs> I thought there was only First Baptist Churches, uh, <laughs> other than uh, ones that are actual Bible-believing churches. I'm not saying that this one wasn't, but Second Baptist Church. <laughs> okay, that's a first. Alrighty, not sure if there's many of those around. Okay, but you always see First Baptist Church everywhere <laughs> in every town. So that's kind of interesting. Okay. All right, so now let me give you the references here. And here we have uh, stanza one is 1 Corinthians 9, 24, uh, Proverbs 5, 21, Romans 13, 11. Stanza two, we have John 10, 1 through 9, and Ephesians 4, 13. Stanza three is John 14, 1 through 3, Ecclesiastes 9, 10, and Psalm 12, 6 through 7. And then for the refrain, we have 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, of course. In 2 Timothy 2.11 and then Revelation 5.10. So praise the Lord. All right, so that is the end of the hymns for today. And we'll put that aside there and grab the scripture song book and do these scripture songs one more time and then we'll wrap it up for today. So here we go. All right, so yesterday was the 19th in Matthew 18.11. Matthew 18.11. For, For the Son, Son of Man, man is come, come to, to save that which was lost. <clears throat> For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. The Son of Man is come to save. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. To save that which was lost. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. The Son of Man is come to save. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. To save that which was lost. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Okay, now today's. Second Corinthians 5.21 For he, he hath made, made him, him to be, be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. He hath made him to be sin for us Who knew no sin Who knew no sin That we might be made the righteousness Of God in him For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin who knew no sin that we might be made 
righteousness of God in Him, that made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, who knew no sin, we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Who knew no sin? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Praise the Lord. All right. So that is it for today's broadcast. And like I said, uh, that is the passage right there. One of the ones that you really need to know. That one in Matthew 18 11, about how Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. And he is the one that was made sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. And He gives us that righteousness when we trust Him as our Lord and Savior. So hope you'll get that straightened out today and in Him to save you today. Amen. All right, so that's it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me give you tomorrow's scripture song and then the topic for the Baptist bread and the daily strength devotionals and then the hymns for tomorrow. And like I said earlier, I'll be back live tomorrow, uh, Lord willing, to do live broadcasts on uh, um, the Facebook um, page and then upload them on uh, YouTube. But uh, all these pre-recorded broadcasts are automatically loaded up on the YouTube and then I'll post them on the Facebook channel. So those that have Facebook can watch them and know um, when I'm having them up. So amen. All right. So tomorrow is the 21st and it is Saturday and the scripture song tomorrow is Jeremiah 17 9 through 10 and we know what this says or he should know the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked who can know it I the Lord search the heart I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings so uh, don't trust your heart don't follow your heart because it's deceitful and it will deceive you amen so that's that scripture song and then the topic for the baptist bread tomorrow will be titled let god be magnified and yes let god be magnified psalm 70 verse 4 is the scripture verse there and then tom malone is the author for tomorrow so that's the baptist bread and then the daily strength volume one book we are going to continue and conclude this second week on patience and tomorrow is day 259 saturday titled patient in suffering and we have here first peter 2 19 through 23 so that's the passage and then the hymn for tomorrow the second song hymn is titled under his wings and that's a good hymn there and then we'll um read i'll read you the quotes from the next volume volume two week 37 is subject reading and studying continued so last week we had the first uh, um, part of this uh, re on reading and studying um, quotes and so this will be from the second week on that uh, topic there reading and studying continued so I'll read you those quotes uh, tomorrow and then Sunday we go into a new topic uh, 38 let's see how many weeks we have for this topic here so two weeks Let's see here sometimes we have three weeks on topics so let's see so only two weeks on this uh, topic of peace week 38 and 39 so on Sunday we'll go over the occurrences variations and all that stuff and then give you the, um, the um, scripture verse there and then we read fight on stories on Sundays and Wednesdays so give you all that tomorrow so praise the Lord all right so that's it for, um, Baptist uh, the daily strength that's the, the last for this week and then tomorrow's hymn is going to be titled wait oh my soul the maker's will and this is hymn 534 the second on these uh two hymns on the wisdom for the saint spiritual song and so no story for this one so that'll be tomorrow's um first hymn and so if you want to get a copy of this hymn book this is the cover to it and it's got three different colors to this hymn book this brown one and there's a bluish one and then there's a gray one i believe a grayish grayish uh, 
color there. So that is that. And then the Volume 1, Daily Strength, Volume 1 book. This is the cover of that one. And there's four volumes to this series of books. And they're both available on MelodyPublications.com. That's where you can order those. And then the Scripture Song book and CDs should still be available to order on uh, www.dailyscripturesongs.com. That's Brother Dean and Sister Patty Runyon's website, Missionaries to Port Kaituma, Guyana. So pray for them and uh, let's see what's going on with them there on that website. And then the Baptist Bread devotional book. This is from last month and this month. So if you order now, you'll get the one for uh, November and December. And it comes in a box of 10. And that's uh, $12.95 every other month. You'll get those. And you can keep one for yourself or hand them all out to other people, however you want to do it. And uh, that's available on baptistbread.com or www.timgreenministries.org. And then the Bible, the King James Bible, the Word of God. This is the first book we shall be beginning into and reading it and studying it and showing ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth truth, and search the scripture and uh, go to the Lord in prayer and ask him for his help to help you and guide you in the tall truth of his word. So praise the Lord. All right. And, uh, of course, uh, like I said, tomorrow I'll be back live tomorrow on Facebook. And um, if you know somebody doesn't have Facebook, of course, you can direct them to the YouTube channel by going to Ambassador for Christ Broadcasting and um, typing that in or Baptist Bread Broadcast and look me up that way and like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. So praise the Lord. All right. So thanks again for praying for this uh, trip that we did over the last two weeks, going to each of these capitals up north. And uh, um, so amen. All right. And continue to pray for uh, this nation and pray for your nation, wherever you're watching from. So thank you again. And Lord willing, will be back live tomorrow. So. Bye-bye uh, till now, or for now, until then. All right.